Good afternoon, family, friends, community leaders, and distinguished guests. As we gather in unity this day to celebrate great man, Mr. Emlyn Tennell. We thank you, God, for the gifts, talents, and legacy of Mr. Tennell. We thank you, God, for his excellent service in the Coast Guard during World War II. We thank you, God, for this trailblazer from Garrett Hill who graduated from Radnor High School and was the first African-American inducted into the Football Hall of Fame, the Professional Hall of Fame in 1967. Before he was the star defensive back for the New York football giants in the 1950s, Emlyn Lewis Tennell grew up in the Philadelphia suburb of Radnor, Pennsylvania, just eight miles northwest of the city. Emlyn Tennell was a true hidden figure. I mean, nobody actually knew that much about him except the people from his home, Garrett Hill, Radnor Township. After starring at halfback for Radnor High School in the early 1940s, Emlyn would go on to attend college and play football at Toledo University in Ohio. But after a promising start to his freshman year, Tennell suffered a broken neck in a game against Marshall. He actually broke his neck at Toledo. The father came in and gave him his rights because he thought he was going to die. But he, he pulled through. He came back to, to, to Garrett Hill and uh, he pulled through. Despite the potential career-ending injury, Amlin would rehabilitate sufficiently enough to help lead Toledo's basketball team to the finals of the 1943 National Invitational Tournament. With a strong desire to serve his country in World War II, Amlin would enlist in the United States Coast Guard in the spring of 1943. Stationed aboard the USS Edmund in the South Pacific, the stories of Tennell's bravery and heroics have come to light over time. He was on a destroyer that got torpedoed by the Japanese. He dove down 10 stories into the water and he saved the fella. Ten years ago, I stumbled upon Emlyn Tennell and his story, and really we didn't know about what his contributions were in the Coast Guard. So they went back and they looked at his record, and in his record, they actually found a citation basically for a silver life-saving medal for a different incident in 1946, and found out that he had saved a shipmate's life on board the USS Adaman, and he put him out with his own hands. He obviously burned himself. So a silver life-saving medal is one of the highest awards that can be given to a Coast Guard person for putting themselves in peril in order to save someone else's life, and that's exactly what he did. You know, he is an amazing piece of our history. Saving two lives, guardian ethos, honor, respect, devotion to duty, he hits all the marks. Following the war, Emlyn finished out his collegiate career playing two seasons at the University of Iowa. Undrafted out of college, Emlyn's legend would continue to grow with the story of him hitchhiking to the polo grounds in New York, where he walked into the Giants' offices and asked Jack Mara for a tryout. You know, Emlyn just, he showed up one day. Emlyn never had a driver's license, and so he hitchhiked everywhere. See, back then, your scouting was basically done by uh, reading Street and Smiths. That's how my dad did it, and you know, they didn't have many scouts back then. There, there wasn't any, you know, tapes or videos on anybody. It was basically what you read in Street and Smiths that kind of dictated who you were gonna draft, and then occasionally you might go out and, and watch him play in college, but they literally knew nothing about Emlyn. Um, until he showed up and, and asked for the tryout. And sure enough, in 1948, Emlyn Tennell became the first African American to suit up for Big Blue. Bursting onto the scene is the Giants' new punt return specialist and defensive back. Tennell escapes a trap on a punt. His nifty footwork and change of pace gains 61 yards. Watch him take off. Tennell recorded seven interceptions and one touchdown his rookie season just the beginning of a legendary career. A true pioneer, Emlyn Tunnell would blaze a trail by becoming the first African American to play football for the New York Giants. But this breaking of the color barrier brought with it challenging times for the young phenom. After Jackie Robinson was the first black in baseball in 47, he played for the Giants. And he had to go through a, a, a lot of prejudice and everything back then. When they used to go on the road, a lot of the hotels would not let African Americans in there. And my dad had to kind of step up and say, well, then you're not letting any of us in because we're not staying. 
and in a way Emlyn was a pioneer at that point also. He was the first African American and I think that comparison Jackie Robinson is a good one. In 1949, Emlyn Tunnell entered his second season with Big Blue, and he would help turn the Giants into one of the best defensive teams in the league. He fires a long pass, a danger pass, but fearless ball hawk M. Tunnell makes the catch for New York. We had some pretty iconic players back then, you know, I mean, Emlyn played in the same backfield as Tom Landry, and this was when our defense was really kind of at its best, and we had some pretty talented players back then, Emlyn probably being the most talented. John Kennedy intercepts, laterals to Tom Landry, who laterals the pigskin off to Emlyn Tunnell, and the Cardinal threat dies. The Giants were all about defense back then. There wasn't a lot of offense, and Emlyn was certainly the biggest piece of that whole puzzle. Tunnell would put up career highs in 1949, tallying 10 interceptions and returning two of them for scores. He also notched his first touchdown on a punt return. The high punt drops into the waiting arms of Evelyn Tunnell, and he does what the New York fans have been hoping for all afternoon as he dodges away from the outstretched hands of the Eagle defenders to romp 72 yards behind good blocking, adding another brilliant run back to his record and a touchdown to the New York side of the scoreboard. We don't get to see a lot of the old uh, tapes or videos of that era, so it's unfortunate that you know the player of today and the fan of today has really never even heard of Evelyn Tunnell because when he was a player back then, if I can compare him, he was a combination of Ed Reed and uh, Deion Sanders. He was ahead of his time. But Emlyn wasn't just a great teammate on the field. He was a kind-hearted man who accepted everyone for who they were. Emlyn Tunnell was uh, a classic. He was the first one who befriended me as a giant. I had been All-American at USC. And we had a bunch of old uh, tough guys, guys who had fought in the South Pacific, guys like Arnie Weinmeister who didn't like rookies to begin with, and specifically didn't like me. But him and I struck up a great relationship because he was actually the only one who would talk to me. And he was so wise and he talked about his friends in Harlem and we, we get to New York, Frank, you got to go with me. We're good at the Red Rooster, Frank, we'll have a good time, okay? And it was one of the great happening places. I met some wonderful people there. But just the fact that he wanted to share that with me. He wanted to know you as a person. And if you liked you as a person, you were his friend. The addition of Frank Gifford bolstered New York's offense. And with Tunnell dazzling on the defensive end and special teams, it was clear that the franchise was building into a championship contender. Tunnell makes a great play. He steals the ball up out of Gian Canelli's hands. In 1952, Amlin's 924 all-purpose yards from interception, kickoff, and punt returns totaled more than the NFL's rushing leader that season, and he would earn the nickname Offense on Defense and was named to his third consecutive Pro Bowl. Amlin Tunnell takes it at midfield, cutting to the sidelines. The sensational punt return artist dodges and weaves for 45 yards. He was the first African-American player for the New York Giants. He later became the first full-time black assistant coach in the NFL. He was the first African-American inducted in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But to me, the real impact was on the field. He was a safety who was in charge of sort of roaming and patrolling the outfield. Watch M. Tunnell play it like Willie Mays. A perfect catch. Quarterbacks at the time talked about Tennell was one of the best at faking his intentions, disguising his intentions. Quarterback would wait all day, see that Tennell didn't seem to be spending a lot of time over in a certain area of the field, and throw there and get burned for it. Bobby Lane called Tennell the best in the business at that. Because of that, he was incredibly successful at not just stopping the other team, but changing games. He did the thing that coaches tell their players over and over again, get the ball and run with it. Tennell got the ball and found the hole and ran to daylight. Sidestepping a bull-like charge, Emlyn Tennell takes the ball on the 26. He ducks Arthur Tate's outstretched ice hooks and prancing like a ballet dancer on a crate of eggs, he skates all the way 74 yards over a sheet of ice for a giant touchdown. Em had a great awareness 
of what was going to happen. You're a great athlete, and he had an instinct about things. You hear stories today about this cornerback or this safety doesn't have many interceptions because quarterbacks don't test him. Well, that was certainly the case with Tanel, and yet he still was the NFL career leader in interceptions when he retired. He didn't wait for the game to come to him. He went and made plays. And that idea that you could have a game breaker on the defensive side of the ball more or less originated with Emlyn Tanel. The gremlin, as his teammates called him, would flourish under the guidance of his old backfield teammate, Tom Landry, who had transitioned to defensive coordinator for the Giants in the mid-1950s after his playing days were over. Under Landry's 4-3 defense, Amlin was able to act like a rover in the secondary, making the play wherever it was needed. Tom's defense with Emtonell, even if he didn't play the defense like he should, was strong because of Emtonell. All of a sudden, he'd be like a linebacker. And meanwhile, his man is uncovered downfield. But it doesn't matter, he made the play at the line of scrimmage. Not many mistakes in his career, and a whole lot of great plays. In 1956, Emlyn and the Giants moved into their new home, the famed Yankee Stadium. The Gremlins' six interceptions that year helped lead Big Blue to one of their most memorable seasons in franchise history. Now, 1956 was a very special year by any standard. New York had all of a sudden awakened to the fact that there was a professional football team. And it wasn't just the Yankees, it wasn't just DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle. All of a sudden we were selling out Yankee Stadium. I think the key to our great year was our defense. And you talk about Andy Robustella, Jim Cat Cavage, Dick Modulewski, Rosie Greer, Sam Huff in the middle, Harlem Safari on the other side, Emma Tunnell in the, in the backfield. This was a very, very special group of people. New York's amazing season culminated in the 1956 NFL Championship game, where they would host the Chicago Bears at Yankee Stadium in a finale that would climax the NFL's first year of nationally televised broadcasts. In one of the most physical games to date, Emlyn Tunnell and the Giants' defense would dominate the Bears en route to a 47-7 victory. As far as I'm concerned, that was when not only the Giants arrived, that was when pro football arrived. The New York Giants win professional football's biggest prize, the World's Championship. Not missing a game in 11 years is quite a feat. That's M. Tunnell with the league's leading pass snatcher, Jim Patton. In 1958, Emlyn Tunnell would help the Giants return to the NFL Championship game, this time against the Baltimore Colts. Tunnell stops Amici on the one. In what became known as the greatest game ever played, New York would eventually lose in overtime. The Michi Rockets for the touchdown. The Colts win 23-17 as Bedlam breaks loose. Following the 1958 season, the Giants offensive coordinator, Vince Lombardi, would move on to become the new head coach of the Green Bay Packers. And after 11 seasons in New York, Emlyn Tennell also said goodbye to Big Blue, joining the coach in Wisconsin. You know, I think my dad, he respected him so much, and my dad obviously loved Lombardi, and, you know, Emlyn was, you know, he was one of his favorites. Emlyn played three seasons in Green Bay, recording five interceptions, and as fate would have it, he beat his former team in the 1961 NFL title game. As the Packers win their first championship since 1944. You know, the fact that Emlyn's last season with the Packers and he won a championship, we obviously were very happy for him, and so was my dad, and, you know, consequently, he hired him as a coach, you know, a couple of years later, so, you know, there was no better player at his position when he left us, and I think my dad just thought he could really relate to the players that were coming into that era. I think we'll change our alignment and get uh, two guys on each of those halfbacks, you know? Yeah. Don't you think? It's very kicking a 40-yard field, though, so that's a long ways. He ain't going to rush him, are you? No, no. Not unless we have to block him. You know, as he was a coach, he was very soft-spoken. The players got along with him really well. He just tried to teach them as he grew up and as he knew it. Amlin was part of the Giants coaching staff for over 10 years, becoming the first full-time black assistant coach in NFL history. But his greatest honor would come in 1967, when he became the first African-American inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. 
being the first African American to play for the Giants and the first one to go into the Hall of Fame as a defensive player was pretty incredible. Sadly, in the summer of 1975, during the Giants training camp at Pace University, Emlyn would suffer a heart attack and die at the age of 51. It was crushing for the organization itself, you know. Uh, it was certainly crushing for me because he was just, he turned into a very good friend of mine. Over 40 years later, Emlyn's legend still lives on, and in June of 2018, Tennell's legacy would be forever cemented when his hometown of Radnor, Pennsylvania honored him with the creation of a statue at the Delaware County Sports Legends Museum. He was born and raised here, and it's time people know who Emlyn Tennell is and uh, remember him not only as a great athlete, but as an, a war hero and a, a just an amazing person, a teacher, a scout, you know, coach. So, you know, I hope this will bring awareness to his life and continue to inspire people for years to come. We think that Emlyn Tennell should be up there with, in the Mount Rushmore of professional athletes, just like Jackie Robinson, uh, Bill Russell, and it transcends race. We're talking about the first defensive player to ever be inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame. We're talking about the Coast Guard naming a, a cutter ship after him. So we're very proud of Emlyn Tunnell, very proud he's from Delaware County, and we think that uh, this is gonna be nothing but a celebration of his life, and it'd be hard pressed to find somebody that's more deserving than Emlyn Tunnell. Emlyn Tunnell still ranks second all time in the NFL with 79 interceptions. He made the Pro Bowl nine times in his career and won two NFL championships. In 2010, Big Blue would pay tribute by inducting him into the inaugural class of the Giants Ring of Honor, and his cousin Elwood would be in attendance at MetLife Stadium to accept on his behalf. He was a great football player, a great man, and a great American.